CBS Sports presents Singular at the Half. Singular's wireless polling allows you to get into the game. Only in 1979, Michigan State's 33-point halftime lead over Penn has there been a larger halftime lead in the Final Four. 20 minutes are in the books here in the Superdome. Our score at the break, Marquette trailing Kansas 59-30. to Welcome to Singular at the Half, everyone. Greg Gumbel along with Clark Kellogg and Coach Tom Izzo. And there have been some phenomenal numbers taking place in the first half. Travis Diener, just one out of eight from the floor. Dwayne Wade, Coach Izzo, you and I talked during the, game, during the first half. Dwayne Wade forcing a lot of his shots. Meanwhile, for Kansas, so many Many things have gone right, including the athleticism of Kirk Heinrich. It has truly been a clinic as far as the first half is concerned. Three-point shooting. Kansas can't miss. Marquette can't hit. Well, I tell you what, Kansas is unbelievable. And yeah, it's I'm floored. I mean, I'm not surprised Kansas is leading, but floored by the way Kansas came out of the gates. When it started out real early, I, I felt like Marquette double-teamed the ball a little bit, left some of those shooters open. Then they took some chances and left Heinrich wide open. You can't leave those guys open. Once they get going on the break, he can pull up and hit it in a minute. And that's one of the best times to shoot the three. And then the big fella, when the outside shot is falling, now you have to try to collapse on the perimeter, and that leaves him loose one-on-one. -on -one. Well, and really he's a handful. As you can see, he pressed up on him a little bit. They're just dumping him up. You're not going to handle him one-on-one. -on -one not at all. He's done a terrific job. What a fabulous performance by Kansas in that first half. They did everything exactly the way they wanted on to. On the flip side of the board, we talked a lot about Kansas's offense. They played some terrific first half defense. Well, you can't run the ball up the floor unless you stop the other team. Look at Nick Collison jump out and hedge to make sure Dwayne Wade doesn't get an avenue to penetrate in the lane. And then watch Kansas readjust, conscious of where Wade is. That's Aaron Miles coming off of his guy. And then Michael Lee also in position to challenge Dwayne Wade. He wisely gives it up. But the shots that were falling in the first four games of the tournament for Marquette have not fallen. And when you play good defense, Greg, you get a chance to get easy scores at the other end. Now we talk about Kansas and we go Collison, Heinrich, Heinrich, Collison. What about young Mr. Langford? He is terrific, Greg. He's really smooth. He's a slasher. He's a two or three dribble guy in that he's able to get where he wants to. He's an excellent offensive rebounder. And when you have to pay so much attention to Heinrich and Collison, guess what? Langford can step up and really hurt you. He is 8 of 10 in the first half, shooting 17 points and four assists as Kansas leads by a score of 59 to 30. Now, earlier in our singular fan poll, we asked, do you think it's the Longhorns of Texas? Not everyone is caught up with the Kansas Jayhawks. These are the Orange Men arriving just a short while ago here at the Superdome. The East Regional Champions, 28 and 5. That game will tip about 8.47 p.m. Eastern Time or 40 minutes after the conclusion of Game 1. We thank you for watching Singular at the Half. Will the Golden Eagles or the Jayhawks vie for the national title on Monday night? In 20 playing minutes, we will have the answer. Jim and Billy will be back with the second half right after this. CBA Sports presents Singular at the Half. Singular's wireless polling allows you to get into the game. Sports exclusive coverage of the men's national semifinals is sponsored by Coca-Cola. Warner Brothers The Matrix Reloaded. Lipitor. And by Pontiac. Back here at the Louisiana Superdome where the Jayhawks came out, fired up. Just on the run from the start, and Roy Williams implored his team to keep on going. Knocking down threes and leading by 29 at the intermission. First half numbers. Man is one sided as the scoreboard here. It really is, Jim. Field goal percentage. Kansas, not quite what they did against Arizona State, but being terrific from all phases. Marquette, a great three point shooting team, just one for eight. And assist, look at that, 16 to 4. And what has been great about the assist by Kansas has come from so many different people in so many different ways. Marquette has never adjusted to how Kansas pushed the ball up the floor against. And there's Collison with 10 points, 12 rebounds. Langford leading the way with 17. And the Microsoft agile move of the first half right here. Well, Langford, we've talked about his great ability to slash. 
and what Kansas has done well. They've screened on the baseline, and Lankford didn't need anything that time. Just blew by early in the ball game, set the stage as to how Kansas wanted to attack the basket. All right, Armin Katayan, take it away. Jim, by far the biggest deficit of the season for Marquette, the previous only down by 12. Tom Crean said, we just did obviously a terrible job in our transition defense. We have to talk more, communicate more. He says, I want to try to chip away in four minute segments. He definitely does not believe this game is over. Back to you. Jim, with the exception of the Notre Dame game in the five losses that Marquette has this year, and they lost to Notre Dame by 21 on the road, their losses have been by three, seven, three, and seven. So not even double digits. This is a whole new experience for this young team. Second highest first half point total at a final four. Second to UCLA back in 1965. Heinrich on Wade. Wade inside, bouncing around into the hands of Merritt. And Collison again. Those huge mitts, great hands, good pass. Miles to Heinrich. Boy, that was a great outlet pass. Looks like Graves hurt himself again. He's holding his wrist. And that was Collison again with those great hands. And Kansas on the run, no matter whether it's off a steal or off a rebound. Graves picks up his third. Probably what Marquette should have done earlier. They just keep running and running it to perfection. Miles set a record at Kansas for freshman assists last year. And he and Heinrich know how to run that two-on-one break to perfection. Diener spins away, thinks he has an open look, and another Jayhawk comes in on him. That was Langford coming out with a help out, realizing that Miles had been in the air. Merritt. And look at the Jayhawks box out. Again, a hit ahead by Collison. Graves inside. And Merritt tied him up with the arrow. Everything right down to the arrow going to Kansas. But again, that excellent passing by Kansas inside. Got 25 made baskets and 17 of them with assists. Uh, absolutely. How about that ratio? Terrific passing, whether it be on the break or in the half court set. How about how patient Collison has been offensively? He doesn't get what he wants the first time. Didn't know Jackson was coming from the weak side. Seven seconds on the shot clock. You think that first half by Marquette had anything to do with the jitters of being on this stage? Well, obviously, they had no experience, any of these players, in playing in a Final Four before a big uh, advantage for Kansas. But I never thought that they would come out the way that they did, particularly from a shooting standpoint. Miles has to beat the shot clock. Oh! One goes down as well. Well, Jim, remember how he started this game, hitting a three, a little bit more of a traditional three. And when Miles is hitting threes, you're really in trouble. Wade doubled up. Wrap around pass. Jackson swarm. Out the to pass. the Jayhawks. Two on one. Diener's tired of seeing this. Now on Marquette. Jim, we're going to take a look from the outside. A young man that doesn't take them very often from the outside. Miles only shooting 23% from three on the year. Has only taken 92 of them. But today, he's buried two of them. He's hit two out of three from out there. Heinrich with one more. That was the second foul on Diener. Well, Diener has been backpedaling this second half, just trying to stop that fast break from coming at him. on the sidelines trying to get his team back into some semblance of order and right nothing away working. comes to Lankford oh! just nothing working for the young coach from Marquette he's done such a great job turning that program around bringing it the luster it's the first time that they have won conference USA regular season but they are having a rough time today in every phase of the game nice pump fake the glass for two. Wade. 
he's having a solid game, Jim, because he's not really forcing anything. Miles has been the man offensively. Nobody even stopped him. There's Barrett, a little soft shot. Well, actually too strong. There's Quick that. outlet. Miles goes right past him. Tom has got to call a timeout right here. Get his club back in some semblance of order, Jim. They have lost all sense of confidence in this game. It has gone from bad to worse for the Marquette Golden Eagles. A Kansas clinic here at the Louisiana Superdome. Enjoying pictures from the Pontiac Performance Cam. Jim, we may be enjoying them, but Tom Crean is, and I tell you, this is a nightmare. And is a club that, as you pointed out, had beaten the champions this year. And you'd say, how could this team have actually controlled Kentucky? Well, I was playing say, better than anybody in the country up to that point. I, I, I was going to say, as hard as it is to watch for Marquette fans, can you imagine what Kentucky is feeling like right now watching this? Well, the only thing that would resemble this team and the team Kentucky played is they were playing in the same uniforms. Other than that, they wouldn't recognize anything. And, you know, giving Marquette its due, I mean, it didn't just defeat Kentucky. Man so I'm hit. saying they controlled that ball game. Stopped the team that all of us believe was the best in the country up to that point. Uh, this fast break offense, Kansas from the get-go. There we see the two-on-one -on break. The great hit ahead. This one off the steal for Langford. Kansas breaking out of every opportunity. It's been the complete difference in this ball game. Inside, Langford comes over to help out. As I said, no matter what the situation, good job by Sanders getting back. Last touch by Diener. But you notice how often, Jim, Marquette never even has an opportunity to set up their five-man defense. It's always Kansas with the numbers on the break. Sixty percent from the field. Heinrich and Collison with their experience, so patient. Miles, just from the start. Eighteen for Miles. Collison and Heinrich setting the stage, and Miles having the big offensive game today. There's those hedge moves that Roy Williams was talking about, doing a great job on those double teams. And the other thing that I really don't understand is why Wade is sitting so much in this ball game. I don't think there's any way Marquette can come back if you want to have him on the floor many minutes as he can play. Last touch by Kansas. The under-16 timeout. Four players and double figures for Kansas. 41 in front, unimaginable. the fast new C230 sports sedan with a supercharged compressor engine. To catch one, you gotta be in one. your doctor today if Lipitor is right for you. CBS Wednesday, the all-new Star Search Tournament is underway. Ah! Catch the young superstars of tomorrow on the all-new... You know, the question everybody's been wanting to have answered this week, what about Roy Williams to North Carolina? He won't touch it here. He will not answer that question. 
But people speculating, boy, this is going to make the Jayhawks lose focus with all this <laughs> talk circulating about Roy in North Carolina. Hardly the case. I think that that question uh, is not to have to worry about being answered. Have they lost focus? I don't think so. Here they come again. Stolen away. Marquette with a rare break. Wade. How smooth is Wade? Yeah, he's about as smooth as you'll see. Lee to Langford. What an unselfish play there. Sunday on 60 Minutes, Ed Bradley reports from Iraq's next door neighbor, Jordan, where they have little love for Saddam Hussein and even less for us. That story Sunday on 60 Minutes. Jim, you know, this game does remind me an awful lot of that Michigan State Penn game where Michigan State was leading at halftime 50 to 17. They eventually won by 34. Magic Johnson had the triple double in that game. But this game has been a team game for everybody playing a terrific role for Kansas. It reminds me of a game I saw right here at the Superdome. And that was Montana throwing five touchdowns in Super Bowl 24. 55 to 10 over Denver. Now, if you're Roy Williams right now, what you don't want your team to do is to get in a trading basket game. You want to start planning for the next game. And I'll tell you what, he will start to try to ride this team to get him ready. Wade got hit in the mouth. He's down the other end of the floor. The officials don't see it. Now they do. And Roy Williams has uh, come out onto the floor. He was, uh, during the middle of that, trying to get the officials to come over. Does Wade catch an elbow here? Well, he just got smacked by Collison right at the bridge of the nose. You see it right here. Got it with uh, part of the wrist right into his nose. He's still down on the floor. A young man who uh, is a terrific basketball player. As we said, first team All-American, Conference's Player of the Year in Conference USA, Conference Defensive Player of the Year. It's a very smooth player. But today, and I think it will come with experience, he has to learn how to take over a game early. He'll have to come out here. Young man who's married, has a child, sat out the first year at Marquette, not that heavily recruited. But he is uh, quite a talent. Married his high school sweetheart. We saw that story from Greg and Clark and the crew. Pre game show. You talked about the triple doubles in tournament history. The start and Wade joined. Look the names he joined. Magic and Andre Miller who took that Utah team off that regional final performance all the way to the final. Second nice feed by Bradley on the inside. This game is not in doubt. So it's a matter now if you're Roy Williams, you got to start playing for Monday night and get your team to stay focused, not trade baskets or get sloppy. Novak would like to hit one. A guy that shoots as well as he does from three, he just hasn't been able to get anything open. And a bump of the body. Call it on Lee, I believe. Nope, Collison, his second. Jackson, who has been obviously a great addition to Marquette. We talked about him transferring out of Mississippi State. Had the big time game against Kentucky, 10 for 16, 24 points, 15 rebounds against the Kentucky Wildcats. The team that up to that point had really done a fine job against Postman. Graves back. Heinrich again. Wade, you got to think of it coming back in just a few. Well, you see what Roy Williams is doing. We talked about the short bench that he has, but he wants to get keep people's legs fresh for Monday night. And a lot of time to play in this game, so there's a lot of chance for Kansas to get sloppy. And that's one thing you have to fear as a coach with this kind of working margin. 
wonder how much, though, you're willing to give up on sloppiness to get your, since you don't have that great depth, get these guys a lot of time on the bench and save them for Monday. Michael Lee. I think we'll see that under the 10 minute mark, given maybe Heinrich and uh, Collison some breaks as he's given Collison some right now. There's Collison's defensive ability. Diener just can't stay with him, and this time Diener gets hit in the nose. And a timeout called by Marquette. Well, Kansas leads by 29 at the half. They come right out, and they've hit nine of their first 10 shots. The second stanza. Here's something a little quirky. 13 minutes to go in the game, and Marquette has just used its last time out. Well, Jim, if you're Tom Cream, you, 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 you have got to do that. You had to do anything you could to slow down this momentum of Kansas. You can't worry about saying, well, I'm going to wait on TV. Yeah, there's no out. reason to save it, but it's yep. just, it's just, it's a oh, reflective it of what, how bad oh, absolutely. the game has been for his side. They, they're already, at, they've already exhausted all their timeouts, not even halfway through the second half. And here you're playing for pride if you're Marquette. You've had a terrific season. Obviously, everything has gone wrong in this game. Kansas just totally outplaying them. You look up at the scoreboard as a coach and you say, okay, guys, we're down by 40. Let's get it down to 30. I mean, that's the way you gotta look at it. That's not, a, pride. that's not a speech he's had to make before. No, no, no. That's not a speech that he hopes he ever has to talk about again. in his life again. That's right. And you know who's got to really be dying sitting up there with us is Tom Izzo. Watching his former yeah. assistant uh, coach this ball game and say, I don't want to be there either. Locked away by Kansas. Still hungry. And finally, Merritt inside. And there's Nash giving up some power inside. Merritt giving him a good uh, shoulder check as well. Lee. Young man having an excellent tournament in his lead. We saw the great defense on J.J. Redick of Duke that took Redick out of that ball game and probably changed the complexion of Duke's offense completely. Doing it at both ends of the floor. He's the fifth Jayhawk in double figures with 11 now. Jackson. And it's Langford. Well, what you like to see, Marquette, is hustling. They're battling. Is the official, official side of NCAA sports to get complete NCAA basketball championship coverage. From video highlights to the latest news from the Final Four, all at NCAAsports.com. And there's Roy Williams, the gym coaching for Monday night now. He has both Heinrich and Collison on the bench, trying to save those seniors' experienced legs. Kansas has been working with this. Well, basically working with a two-to-one advantage on the scoreboard for most of the game. They've hit their last nine shots. Well, they didn't shoot but 76% in the second half. They were 22 for 29 against Arizona State, so just more of the same here. Novak works his way free, and he's on the board. His first two. Nash can go by. It's explosive leaper. Not there. Ryan right, to go to Grace. Under 12 timeout. 82-43 Kansas. In New Orleans and 82-43. We talked how this is uh, such an even matchup. The four teams that made it here to New Orleans, everybody's saying, oh, you just pick a team. They're all about the same. Well, we're seeing that that's not the case at all. I go back to experience, but a couple of things statistically. The great fast breaking of Kansas. The other thing, too, against Kentucky, when Marquette stopped their 26-game streak, they were 10 for 19 from three. Today, they have not been able to buy anything outside the arc. Comes again. If you're Kansas, it's a matter of execution. Just play solid basketball. 
That's against Kansas. Number four on Graves. And Roy Williams, livid with Graves, trying to make a play that was not there. Allison's going to come back in. Graves will sit down. How mad can you get at a guy when you're 39 points up? Well, I think if you're a good coach, what you're trying to do right now, and Roy Williams certainly is a great coach, you're trying to keep your team in a concentration mood. Not to look at the score, not to lose sight of what's ahead. Merritt, nice shot. Again, with a little pickup, full court zone trap slows Kansas down slightly. But with Miles, you've got to be careful. He'll break that trap with a dribble, and then you'll have numbers for Kansas. Arquette back in a little matchup 2 3 zone. Miles. Back out, Collison, five on the shot clock. Good hands. That was Townsend. Got a little piece of it, the Townsend. Diener inside, and he's clobbered. Wow. 30. Thursday on CBS, it's a case of murder at the movies. Did a film inspire a killer? An all-new episode of TV's most watched show, CSI Thursday at 9. 8 Central here on CBS, America's most watched network. Diener to the line for the Golden Eagles. One out of nine from the field is Diener. Well, Diener has had his problems, as I said, in the last two games. He had played so well offensively in the first two tournament games for Marquette, but he was two for eight against Pitt and one for six from three against Kentucky two for eight on the on the game so he is four for 16 coming into the final four in the last two games he's going to sit down now well you saw Wade come on the floor he's back here's his two two one full court trap but as I said you get miles the ball against it and Wade comes in almost makes a steal Stead's called for the foul. Well Roy Williams is on his way to his first win at a final four since his first game in the Final Four when he beat his mentor, Dean Smith, at the 1991 Final Four in Indianapolis. Well, that was historic in uh, some respects because Dean Smith did not coach the final minutes of that game. That's right. He was thrown out of that ball game. Bill Guthridge took over from that point. I'm sure Roy Williams didn't want to see that happen. Good box out by Novak. Went on to play Duke in the final in Indianapolis first championship for Mike Krzyzewski and Roy after that win in his first final four game lost his next three all to ACC teams well to his alma mater North Carolina in 93 where he was the only non number one seeded team in that tournament yeah Duke in the 91 final North Carolina 93 and a year ago Maryland in the semifinals Oh, Langford again just blows by Townsend. And it's not going to count the basket. It was way outside on Townsend. People, I think, that guard Langford underestimate that first step of his. He really explodes to the basket. Four changes in the Marquette lineup, including Joe Chapman. Jackson back on the floor as well. And Diener. And Sanders. There is a walk violation on Miles, not called. Langford again. 23 for Langford. He just seems to be able to find those cracks, doesn't he, Jim? Entire game. That is his specialty, though. Yep. Playing so much bigger than his 6'4 size. Wade cuts through, got caught underneath. Marquette ball. Beautiful move by Langford using obviously his strong hand, his left hand, to put it away. He's made 11 out of 13. Pretty efficient. Tremendous wingspan you saw right there. Three on the shot clock, Diener. No one there. 
That was a pretty good idea, but I think Sanders thought that Dina was going to take the shot. Well, Collison had a double-double by halftime. And he has been so patient. That's one of the things I like about this experience in Kansas with the two senior leaders. They have not tried to push anything whatsoever. Collison out, and Graves back on the floor. Here's the 2-2-1 full court press again. Backboard scoring, that's a small advantage, huh? 70 to 19. <laughs> and here you see the zone after that. Full court zone trap, nice pass inside. Tipped up by Nash. Jackson clear. How about the way Lee made room for himself with his shoulders? Really a powerful young man. Wade and a reach in on Kansas. Wade, a really good crossover dribble. Whether right hand or left, keeps the ball low to the floor. And with his quickness, it's a tough move to stop. And it's on Langford, his first. Wade will shoot at one and one. 17 fouls. Yes, this Marquette team facing those uh, doubters every step of the way. I can't tell you how many people, when the pairings came out, said, you know, I think Holy Cross might be the first round Cinderella. <laughs> you know, they did put up a great performance there, the Crusaders in that Two first Two years game. in a row for Holy Cross. And you got to remember, in Conference USA tournament, this Marquette team was beaten by UAB in the first round that they played. So, you know, it's not surprising. And then everybody said, I like Missouri in the second round. Absolutely. It was overtime thriller. Then you had to like Pitt. It had and to then they're not gonna, gonna be Kentucky. Right. They're not going to beat Pitt. They can't beat Kentucky. Well, the answer for the person that said it's got to stop somewhere, they had that, they had that straight, and they ran into the Jayhawks today. Second on Sanders, Graves to the line. Of course, so many people heard the story this week about Marquette in a league game coming down to New Orleans and taking on Tulane, and Coach Crean diverting the bus driver to the Superdome, where he brought his team in, take a look at the arena, to again try to get them to visualize the idea of coming back here to New Orleans for the Final Four. There, was, of course, was no basketball floor down at that time. It was just all concrete. Yep. And someone from the Superdome took him over, showed where the benches will be. There was this type out on the floor. Well, Kansas, 63% shooting. Langford leading the way. Keith Langford with a game high 23 for Kansas. And this is a kid coming out of high school in Texas, not very highly recruited. Many people thought at 6'4, just not big enough to play in the Big 12, but came off the bench as a freshman last year, had his coming out party with 20 against Oregon in the Sweet 16 as a starter this year, obviously becoming that number three scoring option Kansas was worried about losing with Wayne Simeon down. All right, Bonnie inside, Merritt with the putback. Wayne Simeon with shoulder surgery last week in New York City. He was not able to be with the team out of the West Regional, just not able to observe from the bench, but he's here today. Oh, nice move by Merritt. Lost the handle on that ball going up, Jim, and you can see Marquette really showing their competitive nature right now. They're playing hard despite the fact they're totally out of this ball game. Going to call it on Chapman, and when a game gets this lopsided, you start thumbing through the books to see where this one might rank in the annals of Final Fours. And the all-time record, I'm a little surprised that it's only 34, but... That Michigan State pin game you brought up. In fact, Michigan State in that game, that's the last time a team scored 100 points in a Final Four game. Like, that was 101 to 67. They were leading at halftime 50 to 17. I remember, I think, Dick Enberg and I, well, actually, Dick, who made all the calls, Jim, said, OK, Al, this is your kind of broadcast. Take over. <laughs> and he proceeded to entertain people for the entire second half. I know you've enjoyed, though, the week, how much it's, it's brought back to so many people, the great warm stories of, of Al McGuire and your special friendship with the Marquette legend. Well, I'll tell you what, we could use him right now here to entertain us for this second half, I can tell you that. 
I'll never forget Al in 1977 winning that championship and sitting on that bench in tears knowing he had already resigned at midseason decided he wasn't going to coach anymore and what a finish for an incredible career as a coach. How one sided is this game if Kansas was shut out this half they'd still be leading by seven. Kind of rubbing it in here. Well, it's just it's a total domination. Amplify of what a first half tsunami this Marquette team ran into. 59-30. And one of the things that All-American Dwayne Wade will learn in this game or should learn from this game, that if you are a superstar, you have got to step up right at the start of the game and sense it and sense that things aren't going your way and try to take over the game. He is actually kind of blended into this ball game. He's going to have solid stats, but not what you need from the guy that's got to put a team on the back when everything's going wrong. And a huge ovation from the Kansas throng for Keith Langford. So now you have all three top scorers for Kansas, Heinrich, Collison, and Langford on the bench. And that chartered bus that the family and friends brought over from Fort Worth. It can stay put for a couple of extra days here. Hawkins in the game. Cold, good inside position by Graves and gets fouled. Billy, you talked about 1977 in Atlanta. Marquette in North Carolina. You were there to call it. Butch Lee, team high at 19 points as Marquette won the championship. Well, North Carolina took the lead on Marquette. Al McGuire knew that North Carolina would go into their four corners. He had the guts to stay back in his zone, did not go for the trap or the bait. And finally, when North Carolina got impatient, missed a shot, Marquette never looked back. Lee, the MOP of that tournament. Sent a telegram to the Marquette team this week that Butch Lee he said, just remember, number 15 will be with you. Names like Butch Lee, Maurice Lucas, Jerome Whitehead, Bo Ellis, Dean Miminger brought back to mind this past week with this Marquette team making it to the Final Four. Miles inside, and that's swept away by Wade. Deaner, no place to go again. And he lost control of it. Lee, little scoop, Graves tip in. Oh, Merritt got a piece of that ball, took off some of the English. Graves, let it drop right through. You know what, Jim, you're talking about Al and his Marquette program. He finished in the 70s. He was 8th and 70, 2nd and 71, 7th and 72, 5th and 73, 3rd and 74, 12th and 75. He was in the top 10 right on through to his last year. That program was probably right behind UCLA as the best during that period of time in the country. Uh, Diener thought he'd made the three. Hey, he took off the other way, didn't he? Miles, oh, he was making a little move on Marquette and got away from him. Let's check the CBS Sports Line stat of the game, that backcourt scoring stat. You can get complete tournament stats at CBSSportsLine.com or on America Online. Enter the keyword CBS Sports Line. Well, did you think that some of the players that are presently on this floor with 442 to go, Jim, about two hours ago that we'd expect to see out here? Vincent in the game right now. Steven Vincent for Kansas, number 20. Freshman from Lawrence. And Nash with the read on that to force the steal. Excellent read by Nash on that play. Anticipated that it was going to be a pass, not a dribble. Now here you see the subs now executing the Kansas offense very well. Nash with a three. Wade again. Silky smooth to set himself free, but never shows any expression facially. But he's been too patient in this game. And back in this defense, it really helps Kansas because there's no pressure really on the ball. No need to try to make a big play as Nash does there. Third on 
Sanders. Turnovers, inability to convert. Shots not going in. Aaron passes. And just too much from every aspect. There you see when Wade got hit in the nose. Everything going wrong for this ball club. Nice three-point play by Nash. Under four timeout. The lead's back to 40. Bruce Willis, Matthew Perry, starring in the network premiere. All here Sunday on CBS America's Most Watched Network. We got Grimm in the game for Marquette, Chris Grimm. Freshman from Brighton, Michigan. And Moulin Yawn for Kansas, number 55. Leon Wade, one matchup to watch here that could be interesting. And there's Wade again, Jim, so smooth. 18, delay for Wade. Yeah, I mean, there's an 18-point game, which is a fine basketball game. But he's the kind of player who has to understand a, night, a day like today, a 30-point game is what he's got to do for his clock. And he's capable. And Diener coming in there to help force the tie up and the arrow to Marquette. And number 34, Christian Moody. Kansas bringing in Brett Olson. The walk on. And Nash sits after a big three point play. Wade, turn around three real quick. And goes to the line for three. Foul called on Vincent. Billy Halbaum, assistant coach on the Marquette side. There he is, Trey Schwab. He needs a lung transplant. He's number one on the list back in his region. Well, I had to do some research to figure out that he would be capable of being within that two-hour limit to get back home in case he gets that critical call. Private plane at the ready right. the entire time he's been down here this week in New Orleans. The call ever came. Wish him so much luck here in the coming days. Trey Schwab, assistant to Coach Tom Crean. Well, Wade, who's 78% free throw shooter, not getting what he wants. going back to Kansas. It's a good break for Moody right there. That ball got tapped out because this is not the same as playing a scrub game back in Lawrence. I mean, you're, at the, you're, you're right now at the final four playing some substantial minutes. Outside three. How sweet it would have been for Vincent. Here's Diener. Rattles out. Grim, well done, put back. Here comes that full court pressure again. Rather meaningless pressure at this point in time. Jan uh, does a good job there hanging on to the ball. Diener's hurt out there on the floor right now. I think he hurt his knee or his ankle. Off the front of the rim, it was Olsen. Still belongs to Kansas. Zener's going to come out. Bradley comes in for him. Chapman also. There it goes. Wade out. Wayne, Wade and Diener out of the ball game. Coach Green realizing. And I guarantee you he's talking to them right now, Jim, about next year when we get back into the final four, we'll be ready to play. That's what you've got to do. And you know that Tom Crean with his psychological work with his team is probably doing that right as we speak. I tell you, it's a dynamic young coach, this Tom Crean. Vincent going to Moody, kicks it back out, and the three from the corner off the mark for Hawkins. Chase down Olsen. Tignon. Jumper. They keep getting offensive rebounds. That was Moody with that offensive rebound. Number 34, Kansas, who went to Roy Williams High School back in Asheville, North Carolina. And most of the starters from Kansas standing up on that sidelines, rooting like crazy for these guys to they, score. They want to get them in the, in the books with a basket. 
Well, there was a sub one time from Kansas that got a chance to get in a Final Four game and get a shot up. Dean Smith. He got 29 seconds, I believe. That's right. I don't think Adolph Rupp ever got a chance to score. So there aren't many guys, the Bob Knights and the Dean Smiths, that had a chance to coach a national championship team and also play in a game. That was the 1952 Final Four. The coach Dean Smith. Isn't it amazing the, con the connections between North Carolina and, and Kansas over the years in terms of Larry Brown, you know, a North Carolina grad, goes to Kansas, coaches them to a national championship. Roy Williams, a North Carolina grad, goes to Kansas, has him in a position now to play for one on Monday night. Dean Smith, a Kansas grad, goes to North Carolina and coaches champion. Well, how about Dean Smith getting his championship in 1982, his first championship? Right here in the Superdome, got his second one here also, and now Roy Williams, Monday night, will be playing for his first. He's been in that final before in 91, but Duke beat him 72-65. Hey, there's a basket. Get it to Don. This has been a tough, tough day for Marquette and their basketball history. But great for Kansas. We should savor those special wins they had, though, all season long, and then over Pitt and Kentucky last week. That's it. Who would have believed it, huh? Had that last basket gone in, it would have set the all-time Final Four record for the largest margin. 33, though, is the difference. So Cincinnati and Michigan State can still claim it, huh? That's right. Third time in the tournament, Kansas has never trailed in a game. the chant for about the last five minutes inside the arena here. Rock Chalk, Jayhawk, KU. And I'll have a chance to bring that out again on Monday night. Kansas is in the final. Roy Williams once told me, I want to win a championship as much as I want to breathe. He'll have that shot Monday night here in New Orleans. Greg Gumbel coming up when we continue from New Orleans in a moment. Welcome back to New Orleans, everyone. Greg Gumbel with you from our Final Four position courtside here in the Louisiana Superdome with a reminder. Coming up next, Syracuse will play Texas. The tip time for that game is 8.56 Eastern time. The Chevy most valuable players from our first semi Dwayne Wade for Marquette 19 points 6 rebounds Keith Langford 23 points for the Kansas Jayhawks and speaking of the Jayhawks let's go down to the floor Jim and Billy are standing by with a couple of happy Kansas Jayhawks Jim yes, they are indeed thank you Greg coach Williams congratulations and Keith we were talking about the experience for you guys having been in a final four last year being such a huge edge was it for you guys tonight. Uh, I, I think it was this time. Uh, I've, I've been thinking this whole time that experience really didn't matter. And, you know, we still have to play. But I think we had just a slight edge, and our experience really showed tonight. It was a big factor. Roy, you've been an incredible coach uh, throughout your career, but have you ever had a team play a more solid game than that at any time? Well, not in the first half in this big a game. You know, against Arizona State you know, in the uh, second round, we were sensational in the second half, but our kids were focused. Everybody was worried about that, and, and I think Keith, Kirk, and Nick knew what they could do, and we were patient, but we were aggressive, and that's what we always try to be. Great combination, Jim. All right, Jay guys. were awesome. Thank you. We'll see you Monday night. And we'll continue from New Orleans. Syracuse and Texas are up next. They've taken the floor here at the Super Meet the 
As we welcome you back to New Orleans, we remind you, coming up, the second national semifinal game this evening. It will feature the Orange Men of Syracuse and the Longhorns of Texas. Tip time is set for 8.56. There's Carmelo Anthony, only a freshman, but what a freshman he is. The Big East Rookie of the Year is Syracuse's leading scorer. He's averaged 17 points a game in the tournament. On the other side of the floor, Texas point guard T.J. Ford might well provide the answer to the Orange Men's baffling 2-3 zone. The consensus national player of the year has the speed and the ball handling ability to penetrate any defense that he faces. But first, let's look back at the Kansas Jayhawks dominating 94 to 61 victory over Marquette. Greg Gumbo with Clark Kellogg and Tom Izzo. Why did Kansas win this game so convincingly? Well, I think two big keys for Kansas were transition defense was unbelievable. Uh, as our offense, I'm sorry, was unbelievable. And the three point shooting that Kansas displayed. I thought both those things were big keys for Kansas. On Marquette's side, I thought the lack of transition defense or defense in general was a big key. And also Diener and Novak got off to such a poor start. Yeah, they only shot a combined two for 18. But the backcourt scoring, Aaron, Aaron Miles starts the game making a three-point shot. I thought Kansas was superb. They were patient and aggressive, as Roy Williams said. Their defense was terrific. And Keith Langford did everything that he's been known to do as a third spoke in this wheel for Kansas. You see Aaron Miles getting inside, finishing off. The defense leading to opportunities in the open court. Lankford shoots 11 of 14, and he had a number of those in the paint. Nick Collison had 12 points, 15 rebounds, and five assists. And, you know, when you put those kinds of numbers together with the number of easy baskets that the Kansas Jayhawks got tonight, you're not going to win the game. You can't beat them. And you know what? Kansas played like Marquette had played the last two games of the tournament. Shot it well from both the field and the three-point line. Got bad transition points. Marquette got none of that. And you've got to give Kansas's defense a lot of credit. I would agree. That's not the same Marquette team that has played the last weekend. But I was very impressed with Kansas. How could you not be? They were yeah. terrific in I every agree. area. 94-61, Kansas a winner. Kansas, one of the entrants in our championship game on Monday night. Back with more after this. During this year's men's basketball championship, the Well, the Kansas Jayhawks are vying to be number one when all is said and done. 94-61, the Jayhawks over Marquette. They are one of the participants in Monday night's championship game. We will soon determine who the other participant will be. Syracuse, Texas, tip time is about 15 minutes from now at 8.56 Eastern time. Welcome back to the Superdome. Greg Gumbel, Clark Kellogg, and Coach Tom Izzo. As we look to this game, I don't think any of us expects the, the margin of victory to be anywhere near what it was in game one, but the pace could be about the same. Well, I think the pace will be the same, but I think it'll be an up and down game, but I don't think the outcome will be the same. No, I don't think so. I think Syracuse with Carmelo Anthony and the help he has along that front line and in the backcourt, I think they'll be able to match up with the size of Texas, and I think it might come down to the very best player for the Syracuse Orangemen leading his team to victory, even though he's only a freshman. Well, you know Marquette coach Tom Crean would love to have another shot at the semifinal game that his team just lost. Our Armin Contean spoke with him a moment ago. Tom, I imagine in your wildest dreams you wouldn't expect it a score like we saw tonight in a season that had so much right to it. What went so wrong tonight? Well, we just never got off to a great start. Our communication defensively wasn't there. We didn't do a great job of stopping the ball. We missed so many layups and close shots and things that have been falling for us all year and especially the last two weeks and it didn't go and it just it affected our defense. You know, we could never get that juice and that confidence that we needed during the game, especially in the first half. To, to get us playing the way we needed to play. But I'm proud of the way they came back in the second half. Certainly nobody hung their head and stopped playing. We, beat, we lost to a great team. You know, it was our day last week against Kentucky. It was Kansas day today, and, and they're a great, great basketball team. If you could summarize the message you just gave to your team, what would it be? Remember exactly what got us here. Let's figure out how we can get even better. But don't let anything take away what happened during the year because our year was incredibly special. I mean, it was one of those deals that we worked hard. We never felt like a Cinderella. We felt like an underdog a lot of times. But we beat, what, four, five, six conference championships. You don't even know I've lost, lost mental notes on that. But our guys had a great year, and we just need to remember that. Absolutely. Congratulations, Tom, on a terrific year. Thank you, Armin. They did indeed have a terrific year. And now we look ahead to Texas Syracuse. One last thought. The zone defense and Carmelo Anthony lead the Orangemen to the championship game Monday night. 
It is going to be, a, I think uh, Syracuse will win this game too. I, I think Texas is very good. I just don't think they can shoot it as well as they did against us. <laughs> we saw Kansas get off to a tremendous start against Marquette. Does a big start mean much in this game? I think it does. It gives you the confidence you need to play at both ends, but I think the big start probably comes from the Orange Men. All right, Coach Clark, thank you very much. Coming up, the number three seed team out of the East, the Syracuse Orange Men against the top seed out of the South, the Texas Longhorns, the winner to Monday night's championship game against Kansas. Jim Nance and Billy Packer will have the call after this message and a word from your local station. CBS Sports exclusive coverage of the men's national semifinals is sponsored by Chevy, Singular Wireless, Anger Management, and by Wachovia Security.